Hello, welcome to another video. So this is the Delta Epsilon proof for a quadratic limit. Okay, so the last video that I did um, had to do with a linear function. Now this is a quadratic. And you know something about quadratics? There appears to be two answers. Okay, so we might have to make two suggestions of what Delta would be, because it might be something on the left or something on the right. So expect that to happen, and I'm gonna make it as simple as possible. Okay, let's get into the video. So first things first, let's write the Delta Epsilon statement, the one that allows us to do the proof. And it says that if the limit of a function is L, just like this, the limit of this function is 12 at a point. So we're gonna call this point C. And this is what it says, um, that the limit of f of x is equal to L uh, as x approaches, let's call it C. If this is true, it means that for all epsilon greater than zero, which is how much the function moves away from the limit, and for all delta greater than zero. Okay, both of these are distances, so they have to be greater than zero. Um, there exists a delta. For all epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero. Maybe I should change it that way. That's the statement, actually. Okay, so whenever epsilon is, whenever this function moves away from here, you have to move away from here, which is delta also. So there exists, and this is how you write it, there exists a delta greater than zero, such that if zero is less than the distance of x from the target point C, and it's less than delta, that is it's with, within zero and delta, then this function is not too far away from L, f of x, the absolute value of f of x minus the limit is also less than epsilon. That's the statement that we wanna show. We wanna show that if this is true, and we know that this is positive and this is positive, there, is always, there will always be a delta that is positive greater than zero, such that if the distance of x from the target point, okay, is within zero and delta, then the distance of the function from the limit will also be less than epsilon. And that's the statement we wanna make for this quadratic equation. So how do we do this? Now, this is a very easy secret. Let your focus be on this second statement, okay? Let's write this second statement and see what we're gonna get. Remember, we're gonna translate this into what we have, okay? So let's say, basically what we're saying is zero, so this is the proof, okay? We're basically saying zero is less than the absolute value of x minus c, the c in this case is one, okay? That's our target, and it's less than delta. We don't know what delta is, but we know that if this is true, then this also will be true, okay? Implies that this function, the absolute value of the function, what's the function we're dealing with now? It's this quadratic, x squared minus, sorry, plus 5x plus 6, okay? Let's put it in parentheses, minus the limit. What's the limit? 12 is less than epsilon. Interesting. Okay, so if this is the case, then we have this. Let's see how we can simplify this so it becomes something we're used to. So this implies that um, we're going to have, if we do this subtraction, remove this parenthesis, we're going to end up with x squared plus 5x minus 6 actually, and that's less than epsilon. Um, this can be factored. If we factor this, we're gonna have x plus two. What do we have? No, we're gonna have x plus six and x minus one. Oh, that's what we're gonna have. We're gonna have x plus six and x minus one. Okay, and that's less than 
epsilon. Now, this is what I was saying. If this was a linear function, you're going to have something multiplying x minus 1. This x minus 1 is of interest. Why is it of interest? Because it's this x minus 1. That always happens. So remember, however, we still have x here. But we don't want x to be on this side because we want whatever we get as delta to not depend on x, to just be a fixed distance from the target. So we have to choose a value. Okay, so we don't want this to be dependent on x because right now it's dependent on x. We have to say, what can x be? We have to find a number that x could be so that when we put it here, um, it's going to make sense. Now, let's, let's just keep going. Okay, now look at this. We could say that uh, we could rewrite this as the absolute value of x plus 6 multiplied by the absolute value of x minus 1. Okay? and that is less than epsilon. So this is where this proof gets interesting because remember or what I said, because this is a quadratic, you'll, be, you'll get two situations and I need this to be a number. So I need to really work on what number I could use to replace x plus six, okay? And how do you do that? Go back to the problem because the target point is one and we need to be close to one we might as well say that the distance from 1 is 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 or 0 0.3 or 0 0.4. We don't know. But let's keep it simple. Let's say it's within one unit of the target. Okay? So we can say the distance x minus say, say that the distance from x to the target point is within one unit. Now, as you can see, it appears we're suggesting that delta is 1. No, we're not saying delta is 1. We're just saying that this is less than 1, and it's also less than delta. So it's possible that delta is 0 0.1, and this set statement will still be true. Delta could be 0 0.0000001. This statement will still be true because... 0 0.00001 is still less than 1. So we're not saying delta is 1. Okay, so remember that. We're just saying that no matter what happens, we're trying to be reasonable, being as close as possible to 1, delta. Uh, I mean, the distance from 1 at this point, because I need to replace this, is less than 1. Now, what does this mean? From your ninth grade um, algebra, you know, this is negative 1. It's less than x minus 1, and it's less than 1. Okay, now I don't need x minus 1 right now. I need to replace this guy. So how do you replace it? What do you do to negative 1 to make it positive 6? You add 7. So I'm going to add 7 to everything here. And what does that lead me to? Well, it tells me that negative 6, sorry, that positive 6 is less than x minus 1 and x plus 6 rather, x plus 6 and it's less than, this is 8. So, I know that x plus 6 is less than 8. So, a good number to replace this with is 8. Okay? You get that? So, a sensible number to replace this with is to replace this with 8. 8 times x minus 1 absolute value is less than epsilon. The constant I was looking for is now my eight. This could be some side work that you do, okay? Or we'll just put this in a bubble. And look at this. This implies that absolute value of x minus one is less than epsilon over eight. So with this, you can now guess. I'm gonna guess that my delta is epsilon over eight. You could also guess that your delta is 1. It's possible, okay? In fact, let's do that. But again, we won't be able to use this because it's a number and it's not dependent on epsilon. We want it to depend on epsilon because of the statement that for every epsilon greater than 0, there exists a delta such that if this is true, this is true. So because we want it to depend on epsilon, we're just going, because we can't actually do that. So you want to base, base it on this. But what we chose here was not wrong, remember. Okay, now, let's go on. Now that we've guessed, so, 
I guess delta is equal to epsilon over 8. And that will then help you to go back to the second part of the proof. Part 2, okay, if we do part 2 of this, this one we came from here. So if you do part two of this, all you have to do, I said this in the previous video, focus on this, just this alone. Okay, just take this part, leave epsilon alone. Leave epsilon alone in the second part. So let's go here. We're gonna have the absolute value, we're gonna start with this statement, the top one, that x squared, we just wanna show that this is less than epsilon. We wanna show that this is less than epsilon. Even though we don't have epsilon in the picture, we have delta. So we're gonna use delta to prove that epsilon exists, okay, or to show that if delta exists, there's an epsilon. But we've just guessed an epsilon at this point, okay, and a delta at this point. So x squared, where is it? Plus 5x plus 6 minus 12 will be equal to, so this is the part two, will be equal to, maybe I should put a line here so you see that I'm, I'm taking the second part, will be equal to the absolute value if you resolve this will be x squared plus 5x minus 6. So what does this mean? It means I'm at the end of my proof because all I have to do is replace this with something that I know Replace this with something that I know. Remember, we know that this is less than delta. And we also know that this is less than 8. So I might just say that actually this expression is less than 8 delta. It makes sense. If this is less than 8 and this is less than delta, then the product of those two things, definitely this product will be less than this product. It makes sense. In case you're confused, let me show you something. Let's assume, just a small bubble here, 2 is less than 3, and I tell you that 4 is less than 5. Then 2 times 4 must be less than 3 times 5. There's nothing else you can do about that, okay? So that's exactly what has happened. We know this is less than 8. We know this is less than delta. And the product of the two is eight delta. Okay, so that, and what, does, what do you think this means? This actually is eight times, what did we say delta was again? Epsilon over eight. And what does this give us? It's less than epsilon. So this function from the beginning, which is basically f of x minus l, is less than epsilon. So I can actually drag this down here and say that this is x squared plus 5x plus 6 minus 12 is less than epsilon. That's how you do the proof. Go this way, get a suggestion for delta, and then start again and make sure you bring back delta, which is in terms of epsilon, and you'll be able to get that right. Remember, it's a proof. You know where you're going. You're just trying to game the system. I'll see you in the next video. Don't stop learning, because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.